no doubt some of my philosophies here at the Nut and Fancy Project fly right in the face of political correctness and popular thinking. I know that, uh, but I do not apologize for it. In fact, if I feel it is right, I will stick to my guns, no pun intended, and I'll just keep advocating what I feel is correct and that which will serve society for the greater benefit. One of those things, and one of those philosophies which I've advocated, you've seen in my videos, Obligation of Carry, Mobility versus Firepower, is my admonition that good people should be armed pretty much all the time. Um, contrary to political correctness, this does not lead to more crime. It does not lead to gunfights in the streets. In fact, it's just the opposite. Uh, an armed society is a polite society, and there's many studies which prove that concealed carriers reduce violent crime. Florida would be an outstanding case study for that. Now, if that's the case, and you know I do advocate always carrying whenever you can, uh, especially if you're an off-duty police officer or law enforcement officer, you should always have a gun on you. I know it sounds uh, crazy to say that, but guys, trust me, there's a lot of off-duty cops that choose not to carry. They just think it's part of their job, and you know what? I'm off duty. I'm not doing my job when I'm off duty. There's some cops that feel that way. Also, for you concealed carry permit holders, carry all the time. But like I was saying, for that to work, you need a system that works, both a gun and a holster system, which is comfortable, that can fulfill that 24-7 carry goal, which you should have. Here is just such a gun, and welcome to my tabletop review of it. This is Net and Fancy talking about the 380 subcompact pistol, the Ruger LCP. Great pistol, and there's a lot of good things to talk about uh, this gun. You may have seen me shooting it in what I call, uh, kind of tongue-in-cheek, the Nut and Fancy Tactical Clinic. Took it out in the desert and shot it away. Came away very impressed, by the way. Very accurate gun. I'll talk to that as I go down my talking points, uh, blah, 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 and of course, as I do that, I'll probably forget some details. Excuse me. But, like most Nut and Fancy videos, hopefully you will find that the details are pretty much correct, and they'll cover the bases that I think most users want to know about. Let's get going. First off, POU, that's a Nut and Fancy term, philosophy of use. Kind of already hit that. This is a subcompact carry gun. First, I'll put in a POU as an officer's backup gun. To me, that means a gun is small enough to be carried on the ankle because a lot of cops are carrying stuff around, and I'm talking on duty, a normal uh, police officer, has a gear belt, very heavy, very uh, you know maxed out with all types of gear, really no place for an extra gun. Usually on the ankle is where this gun will go. Uh, perhaps on a belly band or in a holster on the body armor the officer is wearing. So that's one POU. Also it can be a primary carry gun for a concealed carry permit holder. Since it is so lightweight and comfortable you'll find yourself loving this gun and carry and chances are you're going to have a high probability with LCB I'm sorry LCP carrying it on your person and it'll be there when you need it. Enough of the POU. We've discussed this in a lot of other videos. It's the same as all the other compact guns. Size and weight. All right, this is a Ruger LCP, and to be fair in this review, I've got to bring in another gun, which it kind of copies, and that is my previously reviewed, positively I might add, the kel P3 AT. There it is. Did some desert shooting with this, did some tabletop reviewing with the P3 AT, and I am very favorably impressed with the gun and remain so the Ruger LCP does not change that. However, these two guns are very similar. They fulfill the same POU in my mind. They cost about the same price. I'll talk to that here in a sec. So it behooves, behooves us to kind of compare and contrast the designs as we go. And we're going to start it out here in size and weight. The kel P3AT versus LCP, they are almost identical in weight. LCP is 9.6 ounces, 9.2 ounces, empty guns, one empty magazine inside the guns. Pretty similar. I'm going to call it identical. The width, and that is a very critical dimension, guys, when you're carrying a gun. If you're looking for a comfortable carry gun, go for a skinny one. A fat carry gun is one that you're going to be bumping into all the time, 
and you may not like it. And when you don't like it, whether you do it subconsciously or not, you're going to leave it at home. So 0.741 inches in width, 0.748 is it, I think? Yeah, 0.748 for the P3AT. Again, pretty close to identical in width. Both of them very skinny. The kel is just a little bit shorter in overall height, but it is a nominal advantage at best. I will call the guns basically identical for all practical purposes in size and weight. That is a good thing. That means they are indeed ankle carry capable, and that is a, uh, a good compliment. I've tried carrying the Walther PPK, a reference 380 automatic pistol, semi-automatic pistol of mine, in ankle, and I will tell you it's a little bit heavy, yes, even slightly bulky for me. Your mileage may vary. These two guns get that type of carry right, and they're just as comfortable on the belly band. Great. Pocket holsters too, although I generally don't advocate pocket carry, just because the presentation can be inconsistent when you try to draw the gun. How's the firepower on, on the LCP? Well, it's identical to the other two guns I just showed you, showed you, the Walther PPK and the P3AT, 6 plus 1, which is normal firepower for a subcompact 380 semi-automatic pistol, and actually that's two more rounds than a compact revolver. That's pretty good. And honestly, guys, I think of a 380 ACP, cartridge and the stopping power of such a cartridge when loaded with an excellent round like the 90 grain, 90 grain jacket uh, Hydroshock round is what I'm trying to say. Great cartridge. I think it's on par with the 38 Special. Uh, on some loadings, maybe a little bit better. Now I'm talking standard pressure 38 Special. So if this falls under the firepower, firepower category, two more rounds than that revolver with the equal power cartridge for... A gun, by the way, I forgot to say the weight specific, uh, yeah, I did, sub 10 ounces on both of these guns. Excellent. That is excellent. So, adequate for what it is. Remember the POU? We can't criticize the firepower when we are talking a gun that's so compact in basically every critical dimension and super lightweight. Firepower is adequate. How's the accuracy? Well, you guys saw me shooting this gun already. Here's the target of it. The LCP was amazingly accurate. That's what I titled my desert shooting as. There's the target I cut out with a knife, and it's these rounds you need to look at. Standing uh, eight yards with the Ruger LCP handheld. Uh, could I have done better? Yeah, probably. I'm sure there's a lot of you guys that could do better too, but this shows that the gun is very capable and seven yards is a realistic distance. I would practice, by the way, 15 to three yards with this gun. Yeah, even up to three yards, believe it or not. That's probably a realistic range you might have to do an engagement with with this gun. Heaven forbid. Hope you never have to. How's this accuracy compared to the P Caltech P3AT? Pretty much on par. Go look at the shooting vid of the P3AT. You will see similar results. I don't have the paper target with me right now. I might annotate it if I have some time there right here in the video and you can check it out. But both these guns shoot um, amazingly amazingly well for the, as small um, of the handguns as they are. So great accuracy um, and this gets us into ergonomics. To get good accuracy, a couple things has to ha have to happen with a small gun like this. You're going to have to master that trigger and I've spoken to that in several other videos. A long double action trigger pull like the LCP and the Keltec P3AT have is a necessity uh, in a lightweight carry pistol like this because we dispense with any safety catches on the side, which is good by me. I like that. But we need that long double action trigger pull for safety reasons so you don't inadvertently fire the gun, especially under stress. I mean, ideally, until we're ready to fire, our finger is alongside straight. Um, straight alongside the trigger guard, then when we're ready to engage, it comes in. A lot of people have gotten that wrong under the stress of lethal force confrontations, and they've ended up just like this, shaking. And I can't really fault them. It's a lot of stress going through that. So that being said, that long double action trigger pull could save um, a very nasty situation. You may not want to fire your gun. 
That being said, it also is a liability for achieving accuracy. You're going to have to stage that trigger with some competence. In other words, you're going to have to pull it um, in such a manner you do not disturb your sight picture. Now I know and I realize that in a lethal force confrontation this gun's probably going to come out under great stress and it's going to be a point shoot. We're not going to look at the sights, we're just going to point shoot it and that's fine. However, Nut and Fancy likes options. I like the option of having an accurate gun if I have to make an accurate, sh accurate shot. Maybe this is all I have in a hostage, hostage situation. And I know that sounds ridiculous, but it's not. It might be all that I have to save a life. And if that's the case, I want some sights at work. And this gets to our ergonomics talking point. Uh, right here, I'm looking through the camera viewfinder. Sights suck on both of these guns. I've said that in the tabletop of the P3AT. It, they just blow. And if you want to see how to do sights correctly on a 380 pistol, look at the excellent Walther PPK. See the diff? Yes, they're higher. They're probably more prone to snagging, but they're not that much higher. But they provide so much more precision and the ability to actually do engagements out to 25 meters, if you are to ask me. I know, because I've shot this gun out to 25 meters, and uh, on one day I achieved a one and a half inch group. Can you do that with a Ruger LCP? Um, good luck, and it's probably more, yes, the trigger's tough, but also the sights. So, tough. I would like to see all the manufacturers of small polymer pistols like this to improve the sights. Raise them just a couple millimeters, guys. Make them high visibility. Don't mill them out of the, I mean, it's okay if you mill them like this, but please, how about just two more millimeters of height, high contrast, preferably a tritium option, and uh, it would go, it work worlds to improving uh, the ability just in case you have to, to shoot this gun accurately. Let's talk a little bit more about the trigger. How does it compare against the kel P3AT? Well, let me see. I have snap cap in this one. I always try to put snap caps in the guns to preserve their firing mechanism. A lot of these guns I review guys are on loan. I do my absolute best to take care of them for the owners, and I sure appreciate them allowing me to review them. It gets you the review. First trigger on the LCP, yes, it's long double action. Okay, then the P3AT. Which one would I prefer? And this is not by a large margin. By the way, the battery's probably going to die, so I'll have to join the clips. Um, I have spent some time dry firing these guns with the snap caps. I will say, by a small margin, I prefer the LCP trigger. It is a little bit lighter, a little bit smoother than the Keltex. But don't get all wrapped up about that and consider that a huge difference. It's not. They're very similar triggers. And yes, again, LCP copies the kel P3AT design almost to a T. Except for some differences in the extractor design and the recoil spring assembly, they're identical guns. I mean, look how close the slides are. I mean, seriously. The sights look identical. The slides are very similar. Yeah, there's a little bit of copying going on, truth be told. But the triggers on them are what they are. They're double action only. They're a necessity for the POU of this gun. We'll see. You have to master them. Like I've talked about in other vids, guys, learn to stage that trigger halfway or maybe two-thirds of the way. We do kind of quickly spending some time on the last third. You can do that in a millisecond, by the way. So we're actually squeezing the trigger carefully, care, taking care not to throw the gun's aim off. And if you're going to shoot a group like I just showed you, wherever that target just flew off to, um, that's how you get groups like that. You've got to learn to stage the trigger and shoot it accurately, to shoot it accurately. How's the overall, overall feel? And here I'm going to talk about the fit and finish. I think the LCP is a little bit better in the fit and finish field than the kel -Tec. With the kel we see some molding marks of Maybe just a, some, you can see that. See on the base plate there, there's just some over flash from the molding. You just don't see that on the Ruger. The Ruger is very clean in its molding processes. Uh, I like that. It's just a cleaner gun. It looks just like it has a little bit better fit and finish overall. 
One thing I love about, well, I, I thought I would love it, I like it on the Ruger LCP is you see this groove here above the magazine release? Remember, in this magazine release, it's problematic with all these small polymer guns where we can actu accidentally actuate it during the firing sequence. I've done it myself. And yes, I'm an experienced shooter. This thumb shelf helps kind of give you a memory area, area where to put the thumb. And nowadays, I recommend kind of seeing your thumbnail when you shoot because that means your thumb's going to be st sticking up. Don't do this. If you do this, you're going to do what I do and you accidentally pop that mag out and you're going to have to go through a tap rack brain drill. Yes, the kel P3AT has the same problem and you're going to have to train with that. But I like that. Other ergonomics, it has a rounded trigger guard. I really like the trigger guard dipping back towards the frame in the P3AT because I can hook my finger there and it stays in place. I know that's weird, that's just how I shoot, but as you can see, I connect with my methodology. It works for me, but you know, shoot how you want. A lot of guys will do that and it doesn't matter to them. I like the grip, uh, actually the check ring on the kel a little bit better. This is pretty much cosmetic only on the LCP. You get a better grip with the kel um, Otherwise, the caulking serrations, very similar between the two guns. There's no hard uh, edges to speak of. They're both smoothed out pretty much. If there's anything on a polymer frame gun, you ever uh, gun that you don't like, just take some 400 grit sandpaper and sand it down, guys. No big deal. One more thing on that magazine catch. See how it's kind of recessed in the LCP? I like that. At least they're doing a small part into making it uh, making it less um, easily, I can't speak, less easy to actuate accidentally. kel not so much. It's raised just like that. Minor point. I will tell you as of now, January 2009, when I'm recording this video, I now say that it's a dumb idea to place your magazine release right here on a small polymer frame pistol, subcompact pistol like these. I know that's uh, contrary again to what everybody's saying, but I feel strongly about it. I think it is such a potential, uh, again can't speak, potentiality to drop the magazine accidentally with this in firing that I think we can be much better served to have the magazine release on the heel butt of the pistol just like we used to do it. But, you know, larger guns, I'm, I'm serious, even PPK size, I think it's best to have them right there. I like that. You go subcompact like this, I'd much rather have it right here. You shoot your uh, LCP or your P3AT and you'll see what I'm saying. You're probably, one time or another, going to do that. Okay, be advised. By the way, I try to remember when I'm practicing with a gun to press that magazine release. When I insert the gun, that will minimize wear of the polymer magazine release. I think some upgrades on the LCP, I've heard rumors that this is actually a metal part. I think the one on this example is not. It's, it's polymer. So therefore, polymer versus a metal magazine, it can wear out. So just be advised. So controls, there's no safeties talked about that. One advantage, by the way, the LCP has over the P3AT magazine lock. I'm sorry, a slide lock. Manual variety. You have to push that up. Don't know why they didn't put a follower in the magazine that would actuate that. So how you doing? It would lock back after the last shot is fired. I sure wish they did that. Neither of these guns have that feature, which I think is dumb. But for inspection purposes, um, you can lock it back. And for takedown purposes on the LCP, that's a nice addition. That brings us to field strip. And yes, both these guns field strip pretty easily. All you do is pull out your disassembly pin. Um, after you've taken the magazine out and done your safety checks, once that's off, the slide will come off the slide rails and you can go ahead and clean your gun. And it does have a full length slide rail on the right hand side, just like the P3AT. Decent. And they're very similar inside, just like I said. Maintenance, I'm not going to go on that because I'm running short on time already. Accessories, versatility between the two guns, I will give the edge to the Keltec P3AT. That's because we can get an in-the-pants carry clip on the right-hand side, different magazine options. They have lanyards, different things, different frame colors we can get with a P3AT. Um, I think both guns, however, will fit a variety of non-specific holsters. I'm talking non-kydex, just nylon holsters, kind of like that Uncle Mike's number 10 ankle holster I showed you in the tabletop of this gun. It will fit this gun as well. So I don't think if you go... If you go with just a generic nylon holster, 
It should fit both of those guns, but still the edge and accessories, at least as of now, advantage kel -Tec. Value, going on the talking points, they're about the same, honestly. Uh, about 280, 270, your mileage may vary. Mm, I think they both represent good values. Now, that being said, there's more competition coming into the market with a Taurus TCP, the CAR P380, that will compete against these guns. This is a hotly contested market. There's a lot of sales in these types of pistols because there's a lot of people, smartly, who are choosing to go armed. I think that's good. And every manufacturer wants a piece of the pie. I think they got their work cut out for them because both of these pistols, and the LCP included, are outstanding and they represent high value for what they give us. Durability and reliability, it's not an Ipsic race gun, like I say. If you just shoot it a couple hundred rounds a year, it'll probably last your lifetime. I had no jams with the Ruger LCP. It just functioned well for me out in the desert. Um, very impressed with it. I did have a couple jams with the P3AT during the break-in cycle. Since then, no problema. Always run some of your chosen defensive load in your gun to see if it works. Uh, I'm also impressed, by the way, with Defensive Loads 380 variety with a 90 grain gold dot. Love that round. Um, also, an 88 grain Blazer Aluminum Case Standard Pressure 380, I think, would do the trick. Um, but all ammunition as of right now is really hard to get. Good luck with that. Track record. There is a recall on the Ruger LCP. I am aware of that. Um, and it had to do with inadvertent discharges if it was dropped on a hard surface. They up date the hammer mechanism inside. They also give a titanium fry, uh, frying pan. That's what I was going to say. Firing pin. That is hilarious. Titanium frying... <laughs> titanium... I'm just loopy at this point. This is like take seven. Titanium firing pin and uh, a couple other modifications. I think a stiffer spring in there. Um, hammer spring if you send your gun to Ruger. Also, you get a free magazine. Don't condemn Ruger just because they're having the recall. There's lots of guns that have gone through that to include Glock. Um, Keltec Kel has had its own issues with the PF9, so no big deal. I congratulate Ruger for making guns like this and the SR9. I want them to continue that process, as should you. I think uh, they have excellent customer service. They're kind of swamped with the recalls now. And by the way, if your serial number on your LCP is 370, that's a gun you need to have sent in to have the modifications made. Uh, if yours are like 371, don't worry about it. If it is a mod, mod number, uh, I'm sorry, mod pistol, have a diamond uh, stamped into the rear of the hammer there. That's it, dudes. I'm so out of time. Nothing fancy. If I had to choose between the two guns, it will inevitably come to this. Guys are going to ask me. Which gun do you prefer, the kel P3AT or the Ruger LCP? Both the same price, both are accurate, reliable, adequately durable, field strip easy, good simplicity and controls. I will say Advantage Ruger. Yes, I will. Just by a small margin, I like the thumb shelf. I like the recessed magazine release. I like the manual slide lock capability. The fit and finish is a little bit better little bit smoother trigger, yes, Advantage Ruger LCP. However, if you find the kel it is still an outstanding choice, and I will not change a thing about my review on that gun either. Nothing fancy, way over time, but man, there's always so much to discuss. Thanks so much, guys. Nothing fancy project continues, and I cannot do it and will not do it without you. See ya.